Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast. This is episode number 64. Very auspicious number. Uh, the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast is brought to you by the Harry Krishna Project, which is an initiative in the UK uh, to try and share Krishna consciousness with ordinary everyday people uh, in, in the kind of Western society that are keen to hear about Krishna consciousness and Bhakti philosophy. And this podcast is a podcast where we try and hear stories from devotees, not just in the UK, despite the name, but from around the world. And we now have a lot of devotees who want to take part in the podcast uh, because we've developed this kind of reputation for being a bit kind of straight talking and kind of no hidden agenda. I have no hidden agenda. I'm keen for devotees, whoever they are, wherever they are, to share their story. Uh, and I'm sure that's going to happen again today <laughs> with our guest. Um, I'm really pleased to welcome our guest, Goranga Sundar Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, it's great to have you as as guest number sixty four yeah. uh, on yeah. this podcast. Yeah, Bhakti Siddhant's number sixty four on chanting, you know, so that's an auspicious number. <laughs> to yes, have it. yes, okay. yes, absolutely. Uh, so, in a moment, uh, people will know which organization you're from. But let's just start. Maybe, well, you can you can say what you want when you want. The questions I put together are more of a guideline. It's more of a conversation. Uh, so, tell us a bit about you and where you're from. Well, Prabhu, I'm from India and right now currently I'm in Jaipur and I've been with this, in a scorn in Krishna conscious movement for the last 25 years. Actually, I'm from a Jain background. My father and all are Jains, you know. So I was like into, into understanding philosophy and everything from, from very beginning. And I was, I was, in, I was, I studied in a Catholic school. So I was into reading Bible and everything. And my friends were more Muslims and good friends. So I had that kind of, you know, Islam knowledge also with me. And I was Jain. You know? So I was like, you know, getting bombarded with so much knowledge, you know, who is God and who is Allah and everything, you know. And so I was like, you know, who is God? You know, <laughs> because someone says, you know, my father in heaven, holy be your name. So it is heaven. And someone says, you know, he, he has no form. And, you know, in Jainism, we say that there can be anyone, 24 gods can be there. So like it was confusing me very much. So and then I had a rough time, you know, before I came to Krishna conscious, you know, personal in my personal life. So I was kind of very frustrated. And one day I went, you know, it was you know just before Diwali, big celebration. I went on my terrace, and I just you know like a you know Hindu, you know like a fanatic Hindu, you know. I just shouted, looking at the sky. If you are there, show me. You know, like you know, but like really shouted. If you are there, show it to me. You know, who are you? Just I want to know. So I just came down after some time, and then we in Diwali we do our, you know, cleaning up of all the cupboards and everything. So it was my turn to clean up the cupboards. <clears throat> so I was like cleaning up the cupboards, and then I found, you know, when I was cleaning this this one one locker, <laughs> like a locker, you know. So I just took the key from my parents and I opened the locker. And in the locker, there was Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. I was like, what is this book doing in the locker here? You know, I was like, you know, my father became a life member of his con in 84, I think. 84 or 86 something, he became a life member. And since then, the book was lying in the locker, locked only. <laughs> no one even tried to open it. No one even tried to open the book, you know. I was lying. So I was like, what is this, you know, Bhagavad Gita. And the lucky it was the 72 edition, the unedited one, Bhagavad Gita inside, you know. So I was like, what is this, you know? And then I li like to paint, you know, like to draw and paint. <clears throat> so I just was turning and I saw some nice pictures, Prabhupada picture and, you know, different, different pictures were there. So I said, okay, let me try painting. You know, it just looks like we're not nice pictures. So I started painting and all. And then, you know, in Prabhupada, you know, pictures, they are quotes in the, in the, in the lower, you know, as the embodied soul passes from Bayo to you then on. So I was reading those quotes. And I was like, you know, wow, you know, this, this is like, you know, some good philosophy is here. So then while drawing and painting, I started reading also. And then as I got hooked to reading, because I was looking after the question answers to my so many, so many, so many questions which I had. So really, you know, I was like, go on, go on, go on reading. Then my, my painting took the backseat. I forgot I had to paint and I had to draw. And now I was like hooked to the reading of philosophy. 
So it was, I was reading, 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 and I completed the whole Bhagavad Gita. And then I said, then I looked, okay, do I have some other books? So then there was this, you know, teaching of Lord Chaitanya and this Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam first canto was there. They gave, you know, and all teachings of Queen Kunti and many other books. So I was like, you know, now I'm going to read it, you know. So next six months, I got Bhagavatam also, more Bhagavatam from you know, the whole set from Miskon. And next six months, I was just reading, reading and reading and reading. It was like, you know, my parents said, what has happened to you? You never read so much in your whole school life, you know, in your college life. You never read so much. You know, what are you reading? You know, or like, you know, I'm I'm reading something about scientific, you know, science, you know, because I just, I just was <laughs> just telling them some stuff, you know, that, you know, you know I'm reading about, this, you know, uh, researching on some science, science topic. So I said, okay, okay, you know. And I used to cover the book and read, 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 and go on reading. And at the end of six months, I literally had 1,000 questions. And I used to write on all the questions, you know. So I had 1,000 questions. So I, had, so one final day, I said, okay, you know, now how to get the answers to these questions? So I went to, let's go to Iskon, Jew Temple, you know, in Mumbai, I was in Mumbai that time. So I went to the Radha Ras Bihari Jew Temple and, you know, I was like taking darshan and, you know, it was like, the Prabhupada Murti was there, so you know, I had for the second time seen Prabhupada Murti. Before that, when I was a small child, that time my grandfather took me to the Jew temple, and that time it was like a unique experience. You know, when I saw Srila Prabhupada Murti, I thought he's sitting there. So I just went there and I said, you know, I just do Hare Krishna, you know, like you know, Namaste to that person. And then, you know, I thought that he will reply back, reply to me back. You know, I was like, because that Murti looks so, you know, uh, natural. So I was like standing, okay, reply, you know. Again, I said, Namaste, you know, like I'm saying, just for a reply, you know. Then my grandfather comes around, oh, ye to murti hai, you know, murti hai. So I was like, well, but, you know, I thought that this person can speak, you know, because uh, he's sitting there, he looks like such powerful. So I had that memory when I went to the ISKCON. So I went to Shila Prabhupada, then I paid my obeisances, I knew his murti. And I was like, you know, please help me to understand, you know, your, whatever you have written. And I've come here to understand with the understanding. So send me someone here, you know, who can who can explain it to me. So that time it was, I think, four, four p.m., four ten p.m. in the afternoon. The temple opens for the afternoon arti, and I attended the arti. And then the bookstall opens there, you know, next to the there was a bookstall. Now they've shifted the bookstall to behind, but now the, the, before that there were bookstall there. So there was this one Arvind Prabhu, you know, he was that time. So I just went to him with all my questions, you know. So he was like, what is this? You know, this is my, you know, question, 1000 questions I have. So he's like, okay, I'll answer. Then he used to call me every afternoon from, and after the temple closes to the temple open, you know, like three, four hours. He used to sit with me and explain to me the entire Krishna conscious philosophy. And then slowly, slowly, I was like, oh, wow, you know. Now all the pieces and the bits and everything which was missing, is going, it's finally coming to together. Who is God? What is his name? Where does he live? Who are we? What is our relationship with God? How to re-establish that relationship? Mm. The Samban, the Abhide and the Prayojan. Everything is now getting clear to me in my head. And I said, okay, now this is what, you know, I, I was looking after for so many times, such so many years. Now I finally got it. So now what to do next, you know? So I asked the Prabhu, Prabhu, what to do next? He said, now start chanting. So I said, okay, how many rounds? He said, 16 rounds is minimum. You can start with some two, four rounds. So I started with four rounds. You know, uh, and I, I gradually increase. And then on just two months, uh, one month after that was Ram Navmi. So on that day, I took the vow that I'll chant 16 rounds from that day. So I started my 16 rounds. I left onion, garlic, you know, everything. Even though we were Jains, we are not supposed to eat onion, garlic, but we used to eat onion, garlic. In our family, it's like, you know, onion, garlic means, you know, they love it. So, but I, so it was a difficult, you know, time for me to leave onion. And my parents said, you know, why you want to leave onion garlic and all everyone eats, you know. So I said, okay, either, you know, you all stop cooking with onion garlic or I leave the house and I become brahmachari. So they were like, no, 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 you are, you just stay here, you know. We we'll leave onion garlic, okay, you know. So they used to not cook for me onion garlic and, you know, like that, you know. So it was like quite a, you know, they accepted it. Okay, then slowly, slowly, I I was introduced to Ramru Prabhu. You know, he, is the, he was that time the Scorn Inc. Youth Forum head. So then I started doing seva there and started reading, pro, you know, doing Prabhupada book distribution. And I was like, fired up to the book distribution. I used to go take the books and go on Harinam, Sankirtan, sometimes, sometime on the stations and just alone go book distribution, alone. 
for many many years i just did alone book distribution one person and many time is to not go and many time it just goes like like anything you know so then one day you know it's like amazing you know like if you know if you have any one of you have been to ju temple on the fifth floor propat quarters there is a jal duta model mm. propa went so you know how how did we get that model you know i'll just give you the story so we we were invited to the navy you know navy college to do book distribution so we went to the navy college and we take book before we put the table there books were not going not going you know whole day no books went so you know it was like really you know frustrating so we were praying to propa please you know let some book go let some book go so as the day was coming to end suddenly we see one person two person three person coming and we had this 1000 bhagavad gita which we had carried and you won't believe in the next one hour all bhagavad gita went away everyone took it was like hot cakes you know going like so even the management was like you know what's happening you know why so much crowd there so management inquired who are they you know <laughs> so they came there from iskon and they bhagavad gita and people are buying like crazy so they call oh iskon okay we can call them so the we went to meet the vice chancellor i think the vice chancellor of the navy you know it was in the dockyard we went to meet that and then as we entered the office we saw this jal duta model lying there and we were like jal duta you know like you know <laughs> me and my you know one more devotee jal duta propal went on this so the vice chancellor yes your founder acharya went on this jal duta to america so that wow you know so can we have it okay you can take it you know so we took that model and that model is now finally in propat quarters you know a fifth floor in ju temple so this is how you know our jal duta model also we came to iskon and like yeah this is how then i then i did lot of youth preaching that time lot of youth preaching uh, we used to have this question answer sessions where we used to invite all new people to come and ask us whatever they want on philosophy on you know and i used to answer them lots of thousands of book distribution we had this book share party where on the uh, during the you know the december month marathon month our party is to do 15000 20000 50000 geetas you know that was the kind of target you know we used to have we used to achieve that target this was 97 98 99 i'm talking of so that that time so this is how you know my mm my krishna consciousness took shape in the initial years and then so how old were you at the time i mean uh, without how old were you when you kind of got involved with the hari 17 17 okay. okay yeah so then in 99 there was a turn in my krishna consciousness okay a drastic u turn you know, <laughs> yeah it was like a shocked you no know, shock turn you know so should i you know Like, yeah go on i mean um um yeah 1999 the end the you know the turning of the millennium the millennium yeah. about to change and, and, this change in your life yeah i was in the youth forum under ramru prabhu and that time one devotee name nimai pandit das from iskon bangalore came and to you know <laughs> ju temple and he was like a strong ritvik you know prabhupad is a guru and he was like preaching to started suddenly started preaching because he was told not to preach openly so he he showed he gave me the final order book and also you know many many he had many conversation with me so because i was kind of a naive you know kind of a, you know, so i went and told the authorities that this person is preaching to me you know with philosophy you know and the authority like you know oh my god you know and they called him my pandit and they removed him removed him from the temple and then he had to go but he had already shown the propad as the guru in me and then i thought okay you know let me do research on this more and more because i was into research you know i was into reading and so many things so so i took up you know propa you know i started doing research because that time the internet was just coming and there was no not many things available on the internet so we had to really do a lot of research and everything so i did my own research and then i came to know that yes you know propad had asked you know july 9th letter he said that you know you have to have ritvik and not uh, you know and propad will be the guru for next 10000 years and then the propad's will and the will was the main thing you know which propad says that all the future members should be my initiated disciples propad writes in his will my initiated disciples so i was wondering why will a will is a legal document one has to understand 
you know, will is not not just you know any document. Will is a law, document by the person how the movement is going to his movement is going to continue in the future. And Prabhupada's will was for this contemporary. So in that Prabhupada said that you know all the future members in the committee in, you know they should be my initiated disciples. So I was wondering how after two hundred years any of Prabhupada's initiated disciple will be remaining because they are all going to die in the next fifty or ten hundred years. You know, so this will become null and void. This will become null and void because no one can stay for 10,000 years. Prabhupada has mentioned there that all have to be my initiated disciples. But how, if the current system follows, how will that be possible in ISKCON? Because all Prabhupada disciples are going to die and then the new breed will come. They will be grand disciples. None of them will be Prabhupada disciples. So this will has null and void. This will has no meaning. How? You know, how could the lawyers who, when Prabhupada was writing the will, did not tell Prabhupada this? That you know you are making a mistake by putting this this thing in this because after a few hundred years you are not going to be there you know your disciple will not be there so then I was thinking okay maybe because Prabhupada knew he purposely put this because he wanted the Ritwik system only only by Ritwik system can Prabhupada disciple exist for the next ten thousand years otherwise no the the traditional system they cannot exist only so that is the reason why I was like okay then you know, Prabhupada will is there. Then the corresponding document is there, July 9th letter. Then people showed me, oh, but Prabhupada told that, you know, anyone can become guru. He has written some letters. So I said, okay, when is the letter? 72, this is going to 72, 73. I said, okay, wait a second. Prabhupada, there's a quote of Prabhupada, you know, where Prabhupada says that, you know, what I say now, you have to do that. That, you know, I just read the quote if you want. Mm. Can I read the quote? Yes, please go ahead, please. Yeah, just one second. It's uh, very, yeah. So this is April 15th, 1975. Very, very important for people who quote, you know, that Prabhupada told someone to become Guru. Prabhupada says here, I may say so many things to you, but when I say something directly, do it. Your first duty is to do that. You cannot argue. Sir, you said me like this before. No, that is not your duty. What I say now, do it. That is obedience. If the captain of the ship if the captain of the ship says five degree starboard and the first mate replies, but captain, before you told me 10 degree port, then it could be, then it can be understood that the first mate has gone insane. So Prabhupada, what Prabhupada is saying is what is the current order? Do that. So I was saying July 9, 77 is the current, or you know, July 70 or whatever, 72, 73, which is the current. You no, know, Prabhupada may have may have told. You know, to just to encourage disciples, like you know, my father tells me so many times. Oh, you know, I want you to become the next CEO of my company. That doesn't mean I'll become if I'm not qualified. You know, when if when the when the time comes, he see I'm not qualified. It makes my brother or someone else he'll make. You know, he just saying me to encourage me. So that is what I understood. Is that Prabhupada is telling others to become guru more of Shiksha gurus than of Diksha guru. And even if the Prabhupada sometimes told someone to okay, you can become Diksha, take disciples. He's just encouraging because the current, the thing which Prabhupada set in gold is the July 9th letter because that letter is to the temple president and the GBC. It's for the whole movement because the temple president is the representative of all, of all his temple, the congregation of his temple. And the GBC is the ultimate managing authority of his con. So it's for the whole, whole society. So I had this, you know, that July 9th letter, the Prabhupada will, and then there are many, you know, in, is calling in you know California Incorporation. Is calling in California Incorporation. Prabhupada puts this clause number three. You know where he says that you know <clears throat> his divine grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada is the founder Acharya of International Society of Krishna Consciousness of California. Other you know whatever he shall be the supreme authority with all respect to all matters of the society. And that status shall not be occupied by or shared by any other individual, either during his lifetime or after death. So he has put that in the incorporation document, that is registered document. So all these things just say that Prabhupada never wanted his position to be taken by anyone. And his position is the sambon position, you know, sambon position, that top position. And when you when we when we see the, you know, when you go in the tatwa also, Guru Tatwa, and when you understand Guru Tatwa, Prabhupada. So many places are saying, you know, like what is Guru Tattwa? So what is Guru? So all these documents, you know, which I, uh, which I, which was gathering all along, you know. So this was really 
Prabhupada says, Uttam Adhikari, one should be, one should not become a spiritual master unless he has attained the platform of Uttam Adhikari. Topmost platform. Then he says, there is no possibility for a first class devotee will fall down. And when I saw so many fall downs in ISKCON, I was like, either the moment, either the philosophy is totally bogus, you know, otherwise, or, you know, they are not authorized. Because if Prabhupada is saying that the first class devotee can never fall down, so how could, you know, they are, we, their disciple thought they are first class. That's why they took initiation. And then, you know, I am, I am, what I am told is out of 150, I think, more than 60 gurus have fallen down. So, I mean, it, you, you take the whole Vedic civilization of Satya Dwapar Teta Yuk, even in that you will not find, you know, so many gurus falling down, you know. What to mm -hmm. speak of 50, 60 gurus, you know. So it's like a unique position where what never happened in the thousands and millions of years in, his, in the entire Vedic Parampara, you know, has just suddenly happened in Iskon in the last 50 years. You know, around 60 gurus have just fallen down like nine pins, you know. And, you know, so I was like, you know, so definitely Prabhupada would not have done that mistake. And then I read that Prabhupada tells about Godiamat, what happened to Godiamat, where he says, my Guru Maharaj told so many things when he was passing, but this thing he missed, he did not appoint any Guru. Why? Because he did not want any Guru to be appointed. He did not want, he, he, he appointed a governing body commission and he told that that governing body commission will manage the Godiamat. And same thing Prabhupada did for ISKCON also, governing body commission, he did not appoint any Guru. Because Prabhupada also told so many, no one can show a letter, you know, that Prabhupada has told him to become a Diksha Guru. That letter doesn't exist because we have, we are already in the, I think in the 2012-11, I had put a challenge to the entire GBC, entire ISKCON, that if you have the letter where you can show me directly that Prabhupada appointed so many so-and-so as a Diksha Guru of ISKCON, I am willing to pay $10 million to anyone. And this challenge is even open now. You know, people will be looking, will be seeing your broadcast. It's an open challenge. I'll I'll pay ten million dollars to anyone who can show Prabhupada has written a letter that now you are Diksha Guru next after me. It doesn't exist. What exists is the July 9th letter where Prabhupada says they are Ritviks. They'll be initiating on my behalf henceforward, henceforth. They will be doing it. So this is what exists, you know. The the document that Prabhupada authorized uh, to become Guru doesn't exist. And Prabhupada says. One can become Guru when he's authorized by his Guru. Otherwise, no one can become Guru. Clearly says Prabhupada, clearly says that. So all these things were there, you know, and then so many quotes. He be, he must be Mahabhagavat. One, when one has attained the topmost position of Mahabhagavat, he should be accepted as Guru and worship exactly as Hari. Only such a person is eligible to occupy the post of Guru. Only such a person is a Mahabhagavat. And a Mahabhagavat Prabhupada can, cannot fall down. So, a top first class devotee can never fall down, and only that person can accept the position to be a guru. He must be a liberated person. It, to, it is to be understood that the conditioned soul is tightly tied by the ropes of illusion because the bound cannot help the bound. The rescuer must be liberated. Therefore, only Krishna or his bona fide representative, uh, the spiritual master, can release the conditioned soul. A bona fide spiritual master is in the district of selection from time, in, time eternal. And he does not deviate from the instruction, does not deviate at all from the instruction. So like that, then Prabhupada says, you know, a spiritually advanced person who acts with authority as a spiritual master speaks as the Supreme Person God dictates from within. This is not, it is, thus it is not that he is personally speaking. When the pure devotee or the spiritual master speaks, what he, what he says should be accepted as having been directly spoken by Krishna. No, you can. You are correct when you say uh, that when the spiritual master speaks, it should be understood that Krishna is speaking. So he, he a spiritual master must be liberated. So all these, you know, Prabhupada, then he should be residents of uh, spiritual world. So now this is very important. You know, unless one is residents of Krishna Loka, one cannot become a spiritual master. This is the first proposition Prabhupada says. First qualification that you have to be the resident of Golok Vrindavan. So I like. I want to ask. Everyone who claims to be Diksha Guru, what is your Sarup in Golok Vrindavan? Are you from Golok Vrindavan? Can you, can you take your disciple to Golok Vrindavan? Can you describe what is Golok Vrindavan? If, you, if they can tell all these things, you know, then we can accept, okay, they are from Golok. For example, if I come from India and you ask me, you know, oh, where are you come from? I should be able to tell, oh, I have come from India. I'm in Jaipur. My residence is in, you know, Moti Dongri Road, you know, like that. Detail I have to give it to you, right? So now, if you're coming from 
know, Prabhupada says he should be residents of the spiritual world. If you're coming from there, Nitya Siddha devotee here, then you should know what you're doing there and should be able to explain then why did, you know, if all these six, sorry, 11 so-called Ritviks became Guru, then why did they go to Goryamat to take uh, Siksha from Siddhar Swami and Narayan Maharaj? Because they should, they are, they were all residents of, of, of Golok Vindavan. They should have known what is, you know, how to progress, what is Sadhana Bhakti, what is Agarga Bhakti, everything you should have known there. You know, so they are going to take, it, you know, Siksha from, you know, outside is gone, Goryamat and everything, it shows that they were not qualified. They did not know. So this quote of Prabhupada, unless one is a resident of Krishna, of Krishna or one cannot be a spiritual master, it means that you have to be a Nitya Siddha devotee to become a Diksha Guru. Otherwise, you should not become a Diksha Guru. So these are very, very, you know, a layman cannot become spiritual master. If he becomes so, then he will simply create disturbance. This is what is happening in ISKCON for the last 50 years. Only disturbance. Prabhupada, books changed. You know, the, the worship, how to worship the deities, that has been changed. The guru system has been changed. People have become guru. They have fallen down. They have ran away with millions of dollars, you know, like Harikesh. Europe, the whole whole thing in Europe got finished after he left, you know, with so many millions of dollars. Or, you know, Jai Tirtha, you know, was cut off, his disciple cut off his throat. You know, so, so, so many things have happened, you know. So they are definitely not residents of, of of, you know, of the spiritual world. So to summarize the whole thing, it is to be understood that the bona fide spiritual master is the residence of Goloka, of Krishna Loka. So these are, his body is completely spiritual. He's empowered to act. And now people say, oh, but how could Prabhupada start a system that was never happened traditionally? First of all, we don't know. Because it is clearly said that only 5% of the scriptures are revealed in the, in the, in the Bhumandala. On this Bhumal or Bhuloka, only 5% of the scriptures are revealed. The 90 or the 95% of scriptures are not there. It's in the Brahma Loka, or, so we don't know what is the ent entirety of the scriptures. Secondly, now Prabhupada says in his Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita, Madhya Lila 10.136 purport, the conclusion is that the spiritual master who is authorized and empowered by Krishna and his own guru should be considered as good as the Supreme Person God himself. This is the word of as Hari is free to act as he likes, the empowered spiritual master is also free. As Hari is not subjected in rules and regulation, the spiritual master empowered by him is also not subjected. So you can't put, oh, Prabhupada you know, did something, you know, that was not there in the Shastra, in the Parampara. Well, Prabhupada did many things that were there. Prabhupada gave Brahman Diksha to women. They were not there, you know, in the Parampara. You're still, well, still there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can still. You you froze yeah. for a bit, but we could still hear you. It was it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, can so, I ask so, you a question? So, so, before 1999, had you taken initiation from anybody in ISKCON? I never took initiation, luckily, before 1999. Okay. I don't okay. Okay. So I never took initiation. I was I was going to take from Gopal Krishna Maharaj, and then for a short time I I stayed in Radha Kund. For one year. Yeah. And then I was very close to Mahanidhi Swami. You know Mahanidhi Swami? Yeah. You know, a Prabhupada disciple. You know, he's Radha Kund. So I was about to take from him also. You know, but every time these quotes of Prabhupada was pulling me back. And then, you know, what really, you know, really pulled back because Mahanidhi Swami and all these people around Radha Kund, he, he used to glorify Anandas Pandit very much. Anandas Pandit is like the, one of the biggest Babaji's of Radha Kund. Uh, he had thousands of disciples. So I just went to meet Anandas Pandit one fine day. And I was like, you know, uh, he knew Bengali. He couldn't understand English, neither Hindi. So I was just sitting there. And he was speaking something in Bengali and the person was translating it into English. So then I asked the person, you know, uh, what about Diksha? You know, does Babaji give Diksha also? So Babaji, you know, he, I told him Hindi, so he understood. So he did. August 24th, I will give you Siddha Pranali Diksha. August 24th, I will give you Siddha Pranali Diksha. So I was like, what? Siddha Pranali Diksha. I knew what Siddha Pranali Diksha is. It means they give you what is your Ekdas Bhav, you know, everything they give details that you are so and so gopi and everything. So I was like, I'm meeting you for the first time. You don't know me. I don't know you. You don't know my heart. What is there in my heart? And you're giving me the Siddha Pranali Diksha. And this is what everyone is investing in Radha Kund. He's the biggest. So I thought that, I mean, you know, this, this, 
you know, is what they are talking is not, you know, really not authorized by Prabhupada. So I just left that. And that time I left even Mahani Swami also in association. And then I came back to understand more about what, what Prabhupada wanted. And I dived in, you know, in, in this, you know. So then from 2001 onwards, I was in 2001, I was in Radha Kun for one year. So then afterwards, I just took this. Okay, now, so, my, I, you know, my path is this only. You know, I'm not going to get deviated here and there. Because that time, you know, whatever you have to do, you have to do on your own. There was no internet available. So you have to really, you know, now people can watch and, you know, they can see so many things and can convince in one or two days. But for us, it was like a long journey, the hard journey, you know, trembling, getting up, trembling, getting up, you know, what is right, what is wrong, trying to understand all these things. And then using our mind and, and then understand, okay, now I'll follow this path. So that was the whole this, you know. So, yeah. So Prabhupada clearly saying, you know, when people say that Prabhupada never, how, how Prabhupada did many things, like he gave Brahman Diksha to women. You know, which was never done in previously in our sampradaya. No one gave it, gave it Gayatri and Brahman Diksha were not, not given. Then Prabhupada, you know, he carried on the marriage ceremony of his disciples. Prabhupada himself tells, you know, that never, no sannyasis have done. You know, but I have to do it. What to do? You know, I'm the only one who have to do this. So he did many such things. And, you know, time, place, circumstance, you know, you can twin and, you know, something, you know, which is required to spread the movement fast, you know. And then Prabhupada gave the example of Christianity. They have one Jesus and then the priest, you know, they all are preaching on behalf of Jesus. So like that, Christian spread very nicely. He also gave the example of Radha Krishna mission, you know, where they have one and, you know, all the people are there representative and it's spreading very nicely. You know, so also then, you know, otherwise there are different, different groups. Like, you know, you know, now all the gurus, you know, they have their group. Their disciples will only come when their guru comes to the temple. Otherwise, they will not come to the temple. I have practically seen them, you know, and then their disciples have a personal room for their guru in their, you know, or their uh, something like that is going on. You know. And and the movement is, you know, they come by reading Prabhupada's books and then they, after getting initiation, you know, their goal becomes something else only. So the movement, the preaching movement that was Prabhupada envisioned, that takes a hit because of this. And when you see the, you know, when one is in the, on the top Prabhupada, and everyone is trying to please him and working as per him, then you will see very fast. Iskon Bangalore is a very nice example of it, you know, where, you know, they accept Hila Prabhupada and in the last 10 years, it has just spread anything. You know, it has spread. So that is what, you know, uh, uh, a, a successful model we can replicate all over the world, you know, and that is what Iskon Inc., which I am associated with, you know, is mm -hmm. trying to do you know, in the Western world. So, 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 so tell us, tell us a bit about Iskon Inc. Kind of what is it, and um, yeah, tell tell us what it is. Well, Iskon Inc. was incorporated by Srila Prabhupada in 1966, 13 July 1966 in in New York. So, you know, Prabhupada and, and Prabhupada, someone, you know, one person asked, you know, what is Iskon Inc.? Is it different from Iskon? So, this is conversation with Prabhupada in in. Seattle, Seattle, October 9, 1968, October 9. Prabhupada, therefore, Krishna conscious best service to humanity because his all problem will be solved as soon as he goes back to his father. No more problem. So then the young man, you know, asked, I saw a card last night which says the International Krishna Conscious Inc. INC. A friend of mine asked me why the word incorporated Prabhupada, because you wanted the young man. Pardon? Because, Prabhupada, because you wanted incorporated, your state wants it. Your state means you. A young man, the Washington state government, yes, Prabhupada, yes, the government wants it. You cannot be revolting against the government. And Prabhupada started laughing. You know, you live, you have to live keeping pace with the government. If we are in Krishna consciousness, that does not mean we shall not use this electricity. We shall not take an apartment or we shall not sleep. Some, sometime, some things unnatural we have to do. Why? Everyone abides by the law. We have to abide by the law. And this is a difficulty. The government provides that religious society or this society, they should get themselves incorporated. So this is it. So that is it is recognized. And so this is what Prabhupada is saying. So that is why we use the word INC, incorporation, incorporated. So it was obviously, you know, Iskon was handling everything. So Bhashila Prabhupada's mercy, you know, 
few years, few decades back, the Nimai became the president of one thing. And that time, he declared independence from the, you know, separation, separate from his con, the, the GBC is con. And, and he, you know, and that, uh, he so, said that, okay, now we'll follow the Ritwik system. Which year was this? Yeah. So, so which year was ISKCON Inc. declared independent from ISKCON? Two thousand four. Two thousand four. Okay, by yes. by the by one of the fact by what not not founder by one of the people involved. Did you say Nimai yeah. Prabhu? Someone called yeah, Nimai. He's the president of ISKCON Inc. The president okay. of ISKCON Inc. So he declared it independent from you know from the GBC. Okay. Okay. And then the GBC, you know, when they came to know, they declared a case court case on us. And that court case is going on, you know, and hopefully very soon the GBC has given up on the court case. So very soon, you know, we'll be able to win the case and ISKCON Inc. will be recognized as a independent. And the best part is ISKCON name is the trademark is with ISKCON Inc. The ISKCON trademark in America, mm. ISKCON trademark is with ISKCON Inc. So we have the trademark also. And then Prabhupad, you know, obviously, you know, Prabhupad maybe has had seen this, you know, you know, long vision, you know, Prabhupada had this, you know, where this was going to happen. And then the Scorn Inc. falls into the lap of, you know, his disciples who consider him in the, as his guru. So that's what, you know, so right now we are trying to, you know, this podcast, you know, with this, you know, we can, uh, we'll also like to invite all the people, Prabhupada and around the world who are seeing that we are forming Scorn Constitution. Prabhupada told, you know, to form an, you know, when I just read some things about, you know. Just one second. No worries, no hurry. And then I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Bro. So, I mean, my question is, um, so ISKCON Inc. was declared independent. It declared its independence from ISKCON in 2004. Srila Prabhupada set up ISKCON Inc., in July 1966. Yeah. So it, it, at what point in history did ISKCON, as in the GBC run ISKCON, which is the, with its headquarters in Mayapur, when did that when did that organization stop using the term ink? It was only used in, in America. Outside America, it was not used ink. So ISKCON in the UK, uh, and actually I, I, I might look this up after this recording, ISKCON in the UK is not... Uh, registered as ISKCON Inc. I think so. Maybe you know someone can do this research. But, but when Is... Srila Prabhupada set it up in 1966, it was yeah. registered as ISKCON Inc. Yeah. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, all the devotees can do their research. Is any temple in, currently with GBC ISKCON under ISKCON it? Because what I know in America, most of the temple are under private form, private trust now. Well, I can what tell you was... what I do know without looking it up is in the UK. That, uh, so we have Companies House, which is where businesses are registered. And we have the Charity Commission, which is where charities are registered. And often, if you're a big charities are registered with both. I do know that ISKCON in the UK on the Charity Commission registered is, is registered as ISKCON UK Limited. So it doesn't and say Pro... Inc. It doesn't say Inc. And Prabhupada was against the word Limited. To use the word limited. There's one conversation I'll send you. I don't have right now. Where, pro, where someone was saying, "Okay, limit is con limited." Prabhupada said, "No, no, it's con limited." You know, so uh, the conversation I will I can send you later. No, I don't have right now the paper with me. Okay. You know, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. You were you were going to share something, and then I I kind of asked this question about ink. So you yeah. were, we got so, to 2004, and then you were going to share something after. I think. So yeah, right now, right now, we, you know, what we are working on two, two, three things we are, you know, working on. Uh, first is the most important thing Prabhupada told many times to his disciple, you know, to that time to form ISKCON constitution. You know, because people come like you, you know, you like uh, you come to ISKCON, and nowadays you don't know what to sing, what to do, what your, what are your rights, what are your duties. No one is there's no nothing mm. documented. So suppose, you know, I chant Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, 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 Radhe Radhe. People are singing that also, you know, or any other bhajans I sing. No, but we, do we know what are the authorized bhajans that has to be sung by, by, by Prabhupada? So all the, yeah, or 
or in other thing you know the rights of a devotee what are his rights you know or the right or the or the duties of his or devotee or the rights of a gbc you know because gbc right now is governing as the ultimate authority of iskon but propad said the gbc is ultimate managing authority not the ultimate authority mm. so where are these you know document you know a constitution is you know which gives you the right the duties the legalities everything it, it is you know uh, uh, put in one you know one place one document and we don't have in iskon such a document so in iskon every one can do anything in in iskon every 50 years a uh, you know a process can change it started by zonal acharya system then it went into on to you know it was propa said ritvik then they turned into zonal acharya then after that you know um, all of um, no like they all became gurus everyone can become guru and then they made okay gurus can be madhyam adhikaris also so so a constitution is okay now this is a framework propad has given us this is how it, the society has to be run so right now iskon inc is in the process of forming hmm. this constitution of iskon and we invite all the heads you know who want to like the brahminical you know people who have who want, who can help us into uh, forming this is you know this Uh, constitution which propad said so many times he said to form the ad hoc committee so that which can draft the constitution and propad gave the direction of management that is the you know the outline or the basis of that constitution and now propad told after that to expand on election management and to add you know like i'll just tell you you know what what can come in the constitution you know I've just while you were talking, I looked up the company's house register in the UK, which is all the businesses, and ISCON is registered in the UK as International Society for Krishna Consciousness Limited. So, yeah, so, so there's no, there's no ink. <laughs> uh, so, see the you know the 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 constitution, the yeah, you know, the outline or the what you can say, you know, mm. how it is. how it can be formed is like the, the preamble will be there you know the preamble you know and then there will be contents like you know is con uh, the purpose of a constitution why the constitution constitution as legal determined you know then you know the definition of members the autonomy of, autonomy of members the society law book the governing body commission the uh, the the decentralization the management institution Now, all these different different things the sanatan dharma yoga dharma what is diksha guru what is shiksha guru what is the what is the you know uh, chaitya guru what is book book bhagavat then what is the vartama pradaksha guru association of devotees how how much important it is you know is vani important or apu important you know how devotees to deal with other organizations all these things are well defined how to do hari naam sankirtan the hari krishna mahamantra the book distribution the the dt uh, worship uh, process the the food offering process the sadhana the vaishnav decorum the you know everything is defined in a book law book like a law book you know where people can just read it and they know okay now you know the like you know the president can be removed by the members you know they can vote and they can remove the president every 3 years but it doesn't happen here No, no, it's gone. Temple that does that. They are scared, you know. That if they are removed, then you know what will they do? So you know, so there is no election. So Propa told in direction management every three years there should be election, you know, and and they should you know elect the. Yeah, I, I've thought I've thought of this a lot before. Certainly, it's gone in the UK. The management are selected, not elected. and yeah. it's a massive organization with an income of 12 million pounds a year and it needs to be much more democratic the members need to be included much more and it's certainly it's gone in the uk yeah so like you know who who can be called a devotee who can be called a congregation everything is defined who can start a nama hatta who can start a small center who can start a big temple you know all these things are well defined mm. and obviously democratic you know because direction of management was democratic only propar wanted that to be set but never happened after propar left and propar told to expand on this direction of management you know to have a constitution and that is what we are going to start very soon so we are going to have a committee is con constitutional committee and then then we'll have that committee will draft a constitution and then we'll put it in public domain and then we'll invite all the devotees suggestions 
you know what what they think that you know can fit into that category varnashram what can it fit into the category of varnashram or you know any you know like preaching krishna consciousness to westerners what can fit there you know all pro from propa teachings what what can fit there so that is what we are going to put so i'll you know i'll invite i you know i'll like to invite all the devotees worldwide to join you know and help in drafting this constitution propa says to to work the varnashram setting and this constitution that propa couldn't do when he was present has to be done by future generations you know so this is very important seva which we and the second is we are we are also started affiliate you know affiliations with isconing so we have some centers here and there we are affiliated with isconing where they can join the like umbrella movement and they can be decentralized they have their own you know branch where they are doing their things and like a umbrella branch umbrella on that top is isconing so like that you know the whole world propa said you can you can open as many temples as possible like that keeping the acharya in the center so that also we have to be able to start so these two things are you know where you know devotees from all over the world can take part active part and start join start you know so if you know if you know if you can put someone can write to us on this morning or you know whatever it's called yeah. @email.com so you can just you can just put the email also Yeah, absolutely. So anyone listening or watching this who wants to get involved with Iskon Inc, please do get in touch directly with Granga Sundar Prabhu. I will make sure that your contact details and your the link to your Facebook page, your website are all available with this podcast so people can help grow the Iskon Inc movement. Yeah, because see, our we are only distributing Srila Prabhupada's original books. You know, we are not we don't distribute edited books. So that is our and we accept Srila Prabhupada as our Diksha Guru as you know uh, but uh, the most preeminent shiksha guru and diksha guru we accept so all like minded prabhupada nogas you know they can come because prabhupada is writing again and again you know your love for me will be seen how we how well you cooperate with each other mm. so we prabhupada requires this cooperation alone alone we can we are doing so many centers are there you know but to have a massive impact you know that is what prabhupada wanted you know he came to the west you know to have a impact you know, just not to open one center to center No, you came to open a worldwide organization, and when you have an organization, then you can spread association. You know, you know, like you know, it is said in bhakti in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and Chaitanya Charitamrita that mm-hmm. in the sangha bhakti sangha, your weeds which are developing in your heart, the weed of nam, you know, name, fame, and you know, they can be weeded out in the association of devotees. So if you are not in a devotee association, alone center, you know, you have your few students under you, they consider you as your guru. you know certainly that shiksha guru you know it enters you and you get that name and fame weed of becoming a diksha guru also mm. you don't tell it openly but you start behaving like a diksha guru even though you are not so that weed which enters in your heart you know in in the sangha of society can be very easily removed because others can see the gbc over it or you know oh you are developing this weed you know this weed will make you again commit those mistake already done by iskon so that is very to protect our bhakti We require a larger sangha. No, no. Independently, we can do small, small things. We can do everywhere. But how will protect our bhakti then? Because we are the only authority there. You know, to look over. and there's no one. You know, look like a GBC or Propa set set a. You know, he set a GBC to you know uh, help people in this only or a ten percent to help people in this. But there's nothing over it. Mm-hmm. Then you may just go astray after some time, or you may you know like I see so many people. You know, uh, they they tell that they are Propa Danugas. They follow Propa Das. you know as diksha guru and then they have their own ashram when their ashram little grows then they you know they forget about the elections every 3 years then they become their you know only authority there and they suddenly start acting as you know like propad only so to keep us away from that we need a uh, sangha uh, association organization is very much required and that is what is con is trying is con inc is trying to set up all over the world so when we have this you know and obviously you know isconic also has many things going on in america where we are doing our organic farming and you know ayurvedic business and you know there we have many farms there now so that is going on we have our our basically is to set up varnashram proper wanted the varnashram system to be set up you know because you know in the temple there is only brahmachari and brahmana and sanyasi have you know involvement a congregation like you know outside people like you you know you know if a person like you comes who doesn't want he can't who can't be a brahmachari who can't be a, you know in, in in the temple what we what do you do then you have to do something outside the world 
and you have to get involved with the karmis outside. And then when the karmis, you have a time to fall down. So what Nashan Prabhupada said is, you know, where the grastas, the vanaprastas, the sannyasi, the brahmachari, the gurukulis, and everyone are there and they are just exchanging with each other. You know, a grasta can do some farming and grow crops for the temple or for the devotees, you know, community, you know, or the kshatriyas are there to protect that. You know, the Brahm Brahmanas are there to guide the society, you know, if it's going away from Prabhupada's teachings. So like that, you know, the whole system is set with Prabhupada wanted. And Prabhupada told that, you know, once we have Varnashram set, then, you know, I, I can tell you that millions will come to us because everyone is looking for a peaceful existence. You know, so Varnashram is simple living, higher thinking, very peaceful existence. So people with this war and everything going on right now, you know, and if it spreads this war, which is going to spread ultimately, you know, the the Russia and the Ukraine war, you know, as if China gets involved some, somehow in Taiwan, then it's going to multi go everywhere. This war is going to happen everywhere. So with that, where to the cities are going to be bombarded first. So where are, where are you to go? You only have the farm communities, you know, because the farmers are the are, they don't they don't bombard the farmers because they also need the crops to live, you know. So they don't do that. So they are very safe. So these farm communities, you know, if we if, if we have these real farm communities, those are Varnashram communities actually, not just the farm communities, but the Varnashram, where from a child to the old age, everyone can be engaged. From a child also has a Gurukul, then there's a Varnashram college where his skills are harnessed more so that he can become an astrologer or he can become a jeweler or he can, if you want to go into business or he can become a, you know, organic farmer or he can, be, you know, many things are there he can do that our skills are given in the Varnashram college and then he chooses, he can do any, any, and then he can serve the community with that skill and the community can pay him, you mm -hmm. know, back and in a society only everything is self-sufficient. That's what Prabhupada wanted, a self-sufficient society where they don't have to depend on anyone outside. They're growing their fruits, they're growing them, they're having their milk in there, they're having their devotees, congregation there, they're earning there, they're very satisfied. In this kind of community we are, we are planning to develop in America and also in Vrindavan. You know, we, it's conning, you know, just like I said, I'm also the president of Krishna Conscious Society in India, you know. So we are acquiring, trying to acquire a land in Vindavan to serve all the Prabhupada Anugas. Our basic is, you know, we, you know, because Prabhupada Anugas around the world, when they come to Vindavan, they have to stay outside. You know, it's gone, Bangalore is there, but it is very expensive and you know, many times it is full. So we want to facilitate all the Prabhupada Anugas. They can come to Vindavan and stay at our it's, it, we are going to start with a four-acre project and we are going to expand to a hundred-acre project where we have the Varnashram community also there later where all the devotees can actually stay there permanently. Westerners, everyone who wants them. And, and like that, you know, we can develop a community, a whole community in Vrindavan itself. So this project is there. So this is the, you know, it is there on the website, the project. So if anyone wants to help in this mm. project also, they can help us in this project. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about... Um... Uh, some of the stuff happening in the United States, you did kind of allude to a court case and uh, do you feel comfortable talking a bit more about that in terms of what's happening with ISKCON Inc. and ISKCON? Well, the ISKCON, what I have, because I've been privy to the cases, ISKCON has really given up. They have, Because the court asked them, do you have a constitution ready? They, we don't have a constitution. So they couldn't establish the legality of GBC. Mm. The court asked what is the legality of GBC. They couldn't establish that legality. So they already given up on that case, you know. So and and they are and Iskon Inc. We are able to establish that it's a separate organization, right? Mm. Now we have independence, and you know we are working according to the direction of management, and we have you know we are going. That's why we are framing this constitution and everything, where you know we can have you know okay we we are ready with everything, so you know for the, for the, that is required. You know? So mm. that is you know so. Very, I think in the next two to three months, the the final judgment will come, and you know we are hundred and thousand percent, you know you can say one zero 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 percent, you know, mm. confident that we are winning this case. So is it is it a case that ISCON, as in GBC ISCON, is trying to sue ISCON Inc? Yeah, no, they're trying to get, take back ISCON Inc from ISCON. Ah, they want to stop oh. you from using the term ISCON or ISCON Inc. In, in ISCON Inc. Yeah, they want. And they won't take away the, you know, the temple also and also the ISKCON Inc. as a whole. Because ISKCON Inc. has the name ISKCON in America. The trademark of ISKCON is with ISKCON Inc. in America. So they want to get back that. Because it has many, many ramifications mm. in the 
in the in the future which i <laughs> right now don't want to tell it, you know i can't speak of those things yeah. but you know if you you know offline we can you know i can tell you about you know what are the bigger ramifications why they are you know so much concerned about the scorning so scorning is really a gold mine it's, it's big, bigger than the gold mine you know? mm. because it has so many such power you know and that you know that's why the whole scorn movement gbc is wanted to win this case but you know propas mercy is that that we are really able to you know convince the you know i will not go much you know i, I don't want because it's in the legal domain yeah, so yeah. i can't speak <laughs> much about it you know about that you know because it's in the court right now but i can tell you we are very very confident that we are winning well keep me updated on on keep yeah, us yeah. all updated uh, on yeah, how yeah. that goes um can we talk a bit about some of your online preaching because you're very oh, successful yeah. at online preaching and there's a few magazines that you know you want me to show yeah please uh, can you show so, let me, others, others, so let me so let me just um, also, you know? let me just prepare yeah. do you want to sh which one do you want to show first the golaka okay, so, the goloka times the normal one you can show and then ah, the yeah. comic so what okay. we you know what our idea is you know that you know we have these in english now each each devotees you know in their language if they can translate this then we can spread this online in all the languages yeah you can see this now you can see the yeah yeah okay so, so i can flip magazine you know just flips it's very professionally done this is so let's just just go back to the beginning so everyone can see this is your oh my goodness my mouse has gone bizarre it, it, so Golaka times is your uh, uh, from darkness to godhead i love that so uh, this is the iskon ink store magazine it feels like I'm reading a newspaper because of the noises. Yeah. And do you, is this a monthly publication? Yeah, monthly publication. Wow. And you, do you, you do this on your own or with others? I have a whole team. We have a whole IT, you know, like team of professionals who are doing it. You know, and devotees, you know, I made them in devotees. Now they are working volunteers without, you know, money, anything. They are working wow. for broke. So how, this is, I love the professionalism of this magazine uh, that's why i'm saying it's, it's like a kind of international magazine you know like back to godhead you know yeah pro padvani wonderful so this is monthly it's it's emailed out to people digitally do you yeah. do you produce yeah. paper editions as well right now no because you know once we have more you know people they, you know more than 10000 20000 people then we can do off offline also right now we are just around Thousand fifteen hundred people are subscribed to it. Yeah. So we want that more, more and more people come. You know, and you know we are open to you know then you know we will send. This is the you know outline, and then you know all these things can be translated into their local language, and we can have a French Golok Times or a German Golok Times or a you know Spanish Golok Times like the Russian Golok Times or a Chinese Golok Times mm. like that different different local languages. You know we can do that. So and let's. I'm just going to show the other magazine as well because there's yeah. another one. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to co um, collaborate for this, you know, we are open for this also. Or the and if someone wants to give their seva on or write articles, you know, we are we are you know inviting mm. devotees to come and write articles on this. In this, this is for the kids. For okay, so this is this is a child a, a children's magazine. Uh, yeah. Wow. You got you got comics. We, we, kind of, yeah. we have prepared all these in house. Our devotees have made all these, you know, images like you know, designed everything. So there's everything is Iskonings, you know, copyrighted. Yeah. So you know, no nothing from outside. So our one devotee, two three devotees are there who work on all these things. Wow, I love the artwork. It's it's very colorful. And so this is emailed out to to younger people. Um, yeah, to the to the parents of the children who have children, you know, they can parents can subscribe for their children, and then they can teach their children from these, you know, magazines about different Bhagavatam. We are we are taking Bhagavatam first. We are taking Krishna book, and then the Bhagavatam stories also. Slowly, slowly, we'll take. This is this one's uh, maybe this is a big quality. Uh, res this is uh, taking a while. Okay, it's because it's Lord Nishingadev. It's a lot of yeah. high high resolution. Yeah, uh, it those... takes time to come, you know. Like, yeah, like look at those apart. look at those fingernails. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, gone. This is your project there. Yeah, this is a project we are talking of. Wow, wow. Well, I love them. I think they're um, they're great. I think you've done it so professionally, uh, and it just Thank feels you, like I'm opening a proper magazine. You know, um, 
Um, okay, so, so and you do a lot of online preaching. Tell me about some of the statistics yeah. and numbers that you're achieving at the moment. Now, how I, how I got into, you know, like, I'll just give you a background of it. So in 2012, 13, after I, we affiliated actually many temples with this calling, then I kind of, you know, I wanted to focus on, because that time internet was booming very much. Twitter and Facebook were coming, going very much. So I wanted to see how can one do this, you know. So in India, mm. I joined the political party, social media team, BJP, Bharat Janata Party, you know, the BJP social media team, I joined that to learn the art of, you know, digital, digital preaching and everything because they are very professionals. So from 2014 to 2017, I learned the tricks, you know, how to expand on social media from them. And then in 2017, I started Twitter, you know, in Scon Inc on Twitter, Instagram, or in 2018, like that, I started. And uh, right now, per month, Twitter, we are getting 10 million hit, 10 million reach, reach on Twitter, 10 million reach per, per month. On Instagram, we have around five, four lakh followers now. On Twitter, we have two lakh followers. And we are getting two million reach, you know, Instagram every week. Two million reach around that much. Then on Facebook also, more than two million reach we are getting on our page. And all our pages are verified. You know, if you see, if you'll see the mm. blue tick on our pages. So that is what I started in 2017. With I alone started. Then... You know, people started coming, coming, seeing the page, you know, uh, nicely. So they're coming and they wanted to volunteer. So I started giving lectures also. So when I give lectures on Instagram, 30,000 people attend my lecture on Instagram. 30,000 people. You know, they watched live on Instagram. On Twitter, we have a program that around two to 5,000 people, they attend there on Twitter. On Facebook, we had our summer camp right now. More than 1 lakh people attended the summer camp on Facebook live. So this is kind of, you know, our preaching on the social media, which is much, much far of ISKCON GBC or even ISKCON Bangalore. Mm. The reach which we have is much, much massive. There's a platform called Trail. We have 5 million followers on that. Trail. 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 That's, it. That's another social media platform, yeah. is it? Yeah, in India, 5 mm -hmm. million followers. Then there's a, one of the, you know, like, like the TikTok. India yeah. TikTok is, you know, the Josh is India TikTok. Yeah. So we have around 1 million followers on that. So, so their Prabhupada's lectures, they reach around 3 million, 4 million views. Wow. So this is kind of, you know, uh, reach Prabhupada lectures are having. And from that, only I get volunteers. So in the last, I started online preaching during the COVID, you know, because people all were in the house and they wanted something on online. So I took that, you know, I started preaching online. So now we have more than 125 dedicated, you can say full-time brahmacharis or brahmacharinis with under, you know, under me getting trained. 125 plus around two, three hundred, four hundred volunteers are there who are working, you know, help be, be getting trained to become coordinate. We call them coordinators, you know, these 125, we call them coordinators. So they're trained, getting trained to become coordinators. Like, you know, they're like completely involved in ISKCON. Inc. activities from morning, you know, they get up around, you know, morning. And yeah, one more thing. We have this whole digital thing on morning. So we have Mangal Arti in the morning. You know, then we have Japa, two hours Japa morning. Then we have, you know, online. Then we have Prabhupada Bhagavad Gita classes online. So all the people from morning till the night, they are just Krishna conscious only. You know, I have different, different sevas. So then we have poster making seva. We have video seva, video making seva. Then we have, you know, uh, magazine seva is there you know then we have uh, we also started bhakti vedanta institute of vedic science like the bi of Prabhupada, we started so in that there are three scientists working under me uh, so they are working they are trying to present krishna consciousness in a scientific way so right now we are work, what we are doing is uh, the modes of nature how the food impacts our consciousness mm. that research is going on right now and very soon we are going to come out with a paper, a scientific paper, how sattvic food and, you know, prashadam has impact on our consciousness and how tamsik and rajasic food, you know, has negative impact, you know, and takes you away from. So that scientific paper, we are, we are working on that. You know. Plus, we are also working on uh, archaeology, trying to, you know, get mm -hmm. uh, different you know, archaeological proofs around the world about human antiquity going back to millions of years. 
Mm. So right now, they think they say only one lakh years is human existed. You know, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand are like us, and before that also like maximum one lakh years. But we are trying to we are, we are trying to collect archaeological you know evidence. Our group is trying to collect which will prove human existence millions and billions of years back. Mm. So we are working on that project also. This this whole group is working on that project. So we have like different different groups. We have Instagram group where people work on the content for Instagram. We have Twitter group where they work for the content on Twitter. Then we have Facebook group that we work on the content of Facebook. Like that, different different groups we have made, and all the volunteers are involved. So if anyone wants to get involved with this, you know, they can join us. You know, and help how us. how do you personally find the time to? to manage or oversee all of this bravo i left my i'm like i'm le leading a varnashram life so i had i taken uh, what do you say sanyas from <laughs> you know earning and everything in 2012 13 only after that only preaching nothing else i just from morning to night i'm just motivating my students you know the people who are under me coordinators and everyone to become more and more dedicated to do more mm. like that they are doing so we have many, many projects like, you know, I'm training all these 100 coordinators to become 100 presidents of their various centers. So that is a long time project in 10, 15, 20 years. We may have 110 centers in India itself, you know, with all these coordinators as their president in that center, running mm. their own independent centers. So like that, you know, it's, you know, it's my mm. like long term vision. And, and, and you're receiving, ISKCON Inc. is receiving a lot of funding and financial support as well. And right now, we are not receiving the, that is the only thing. The fund is the mm. only thing. We, we, our coordinators are, you know, getting the fund. Whoever the coordinators, they do donate, you know, among them. Only we are trying collecting. Outside world, we are not getting much, you know, because we have not tried also and people don't know about outside, you know, mm. uh, about ISKCON. And once we start collecting outside, then the ISKCON will come, you know. So before the case, we don't want to do that also. When the mm. result comes out, judgment, then we can, you know, uh, do it, you know, online collecting the funds. Before that, we are just doing in, in, you know, our coordinators, they help us. So if some of your people who want to help, you know, they can uh, go on our website, you know, is there, they can mm. put it on the project and, you know, all those things, they can, can be done there. Yeah. So if anyone watching or listening would like to get involved with ISKCON Inc, it sounds like there's lots of opportunities. There's lots of things yeah. you can help with, lots of savor. And I, I, I'm really quite encouraged by Garanga, Garanga Prabhu's enthusiasm. I can feel his enthusiasm, even though he's thousands of miles away. Um, I think that I've got, I've got another kind of question that we kind of just uh, I put to you via via email. Was what do you think we can do to encourage more people to to take up Krishna consciousness? Yeah, can, so well, how can we attract people to this philosophy, this movement? That, that is what we work. We also work. we also have a statistic team, analyzing team. So there's a shloka in Bhagavad Gita, Manushram Sastresu, in Bhavnam Janmanante Kyanva Mahapadante. So these things is like, you know, we calculated it. We made them into numbers. And we came to the number that 7 million people around the world are ready to accept spiritual philosophy. 7 million people. Out of which 1 million are ready to take up Krishna consciousness. Mm. You no, know, like the shloka is there, Jnani, Jigyasu, you know, one who is in need of uh, money, one who is distressed, from Krishna says, you know, and one who is for knowledge, you know, those kind of people come to Krishna. Mm. You know, the four kinds of people come to Krishna. So we are target targeting who is Jigyasu, inquisitive, and who is Jnani, and who is in distress. These three people we are targeting. You know, uh, on the social media. So when we target these three people, you know, they already want to know something about Krishna, or they are very so much depressed that they want to come out of their depression. So they want something that will take out from take them out from the depression. So we introduce the, the holy name there. We introduce the Sattvic life there. We counsel them in that way. Where we tell them to attend our programs, hear turns and everything, so that they can feel the happiness within and they can come out of the depression. So those kind of people are there. Then then the inquisitive who comes to us with questions, oh you know, what is God? Or people who are generally searching on the web, who is God? What is God? Where does God live? You know, how can we develop, you know, relation with God? Who are we? Why are we suffering? What is re reincarnation? What is karma? All these topics they are searching. So we are developing a website for these people where we are going to answer, give them the solution to their questions by Srila Prabhupada himself. He'll give the solution, you know. So those people can, you know, and we'll try to get that website on the top of Google Click. 
So the you know, people who are searching the question, they can see and they can come and get their solutions there. And then they can be engaged because I always say Sadhu Sang Seva and Sadhu Sang Seva and Sadhana. These are the three rails, you know, the tracks on which the train goes, spiritual train. So anything lacking, you know, is you know, your spiritual will not train will not be so good. So seva is very important. Krishna says. You have to do seva. So do some some practical seva, online seva. That's why we started this online seva. Then sadhana, we do this sadhana mm -hmm. together, you know, and help people do better sadhana and come out of their distress, everything. And sadhu sang, give them devotee association so that they can empty mind devil's workshop so that they can get, you know, they can have some space in, in the Krishna conscious world and be engaged there with sadhu sangha. And this is how we are trying to get the people. So we, we have these posters which we put, you know. Just two days back, we invited around, you know, we put a poster of ISKCON Inc. Youth Forum Mail. Around 250, 300 people applied, wanted to volunteer, wanted to join, wanted to learn the philosophy. On the Instagram, we put. And before that, we put ISKCON Inc. Youth Forum Female. In that, 200 people, women, Matajis, you know, young. The, it is like, you know, 20 to 35 age. 250 of them applied. And in the Prabhuji, 200 of them. So we already got these 450 people right now. So now, now we have to use them, means, you know, give them some work, some seva, just so they, they can be engaged in that seva, some, some, do, some things they can do. And ask, answer their questions, their difficulties, their personal counseling, and philosophically, we have to train them. So out of these 450, I am 100% sure that 10% is our ratio. 10%. We know that 40 people are going to become ready for Krishna consciousness from this 450 people. So that is the target. We, we, we are going to see that out of this 450 who are the most you know, mm -hmm. inquisitive, who wants to learn the most and all, then we are going to focus on them. And we are going to take that lot and make them into our coordinators for the next, you know, next five, four, five months. We'll focus on that. And in the next six months, these 40 people will be ready to join us at coordinators. Like that, we are expanding. You know, we, and this is how you, know, you can do the, the youth also, you know, that see what they want. Because everyone is looking for something, you know, because there's so much, you know, especially in the COVID times, so many problems are there. You know, people have, you know, mind issues, you know, and depression and they are so Absolutely, much scared. Yeah. So much scared, you know, what will happen. The vaccines are creating any anxiety in them and they want someone to give them happiness. <laughs> they want happiness, someone. So if we can provide that happiness to them, we can provide that helping hand to them, mm. we can help provide that counseling to them, then you know they they become, you know, they are very happy. And you know, they are they are ready to do anything for us. So that's why I know I don't pay any of my coordinators any one money. I don't have what to pay. But you who don't believe Prabhu, they are more dedicated than the full-time devotee of Iskon because they get up morning without asking me anything, without doing that, they are just like the our store, it's conning store. I don't even look after what's happening. My one, one of our devotees is called Subhal Das. So much fired up. You know, from morning to night, he's just trying to, you know, expand how to sell Prabhupada books to the store. How to spare, you know, he's trying to get more and more people, you know. So they are so dedicated people, like our scientists, you know. On their own, they are now, you know, Paramatma is guiding them, Prabhupada is guiding them, and they're doing more and more and more because sadhana is very good. So all these people are so much dedicated that they want to do something great before they die for Prabhupada. You know, that is their life's mission. That we want to do something great for Prabhupada before we die. So that means that if you have such a team who want to do such, you know, who are mm. so much dedicated and want to do, then you can do multiple things. You know, that's why I'm able to do multiple things. People ask me, oh, you're doing so many projects. How are you able to do? Because I have a team which is doing it, you know. I'm just talking to you. But my team behind right now is working on so many things right now. Someone is making the poster, someone is making the content, someone is making the video, someone is make, doing some research work. You know, all these things are going on in the background, you know. And when I go after two hours to them, and they'll say, oh, we did so many things, you know. So it's like such a wonderful team, you know, which I have. And when you have such team, you know, you can do so many things. Mm. Obviously, mm. I inspire them, you know. I, you know, I give them confidence. I don't, I don't, you know, normally people, you know, they try to interfere too lot, too much. I don't interfere with my team. I know that, you know, Paramatma is there in their heart. Prabhupada is there to guide them. If they are sincere, Prabhupada will guide them. Mm. You know, so I give them the liberty, that independence to do what they want to do and to excel and to, and I ask them, what are your, you know, thoughts and how you think that we can do better? 
because i am i may i have a limited mind someone may have a better mind than me my student may have a better better understanding or better mind than me or a better way to do a better thing than me so i am open to such thoughts every time and mm -hmm. you know if someone gives me okay you know prabhu we can do this yes i okay do it you know, i am not like you know okay you know wait and trying to control them you know you know if you control them then they go away if you give them all the liberty all the love all the care then they will give you give the results also amazing result they will and that is what i i do wow this is what you know we should uh, target such you know people who are inquisitive who are after knowledge target those people and try to work with those people and we'll see very fast you know we'll can multiply it like that mm. probably mm. we are trying to target everyone and we lose the focus on the individual who can really has the fire the spark in him and we forget to find that spark so we have to see where the spark is in the person how much how better he can be molded into krishna consciousness and try to work with that person and when we do that you know we have a better result with that mm. Mm. well i find you very inspiring and uh, I, i'm really encouraged by all the work that iskon inc is doing it, it sounds like you've got a, i see a kind of big spider web uh and uh is or a big kind of you know diagram where you, all these kind of arms and branches are reaching out and you're doing so many things yeah and uh you're coordinating from the center you're you've taken shelter Shida Prabhupada Shida Prabhupada's inspiring you and you're just putting out that energy to to hundreds of other people um yeah. it's uh, you know really encouraging uh and um it, it, yeah I mean it's it's wonderful it and it's been great to have you on the podcast for you to share your story Um, I mean, Prabhu, you know, you will not believe, you know, like online, this and these are not Iskon people who are buying. New people, you know, are buying more than thousands of Bhagavad Gita's and other books online from our store. New new people, you know, we are we are because you know my my focus is that you know Iskon has around one point five million devotees maybe worldwide, a uh, one million devotees worldwide, but there are eight billion people around the world. Mm. so if you know who are waiting for this you know so my focus and my target is on those people mm. you know so well, that that's also my philosophy that's my approach yeah. as well i you mean know, how to reach because if you just reach devotees then you get caught up in the devotees only you know and then you know and there is fights and this and yeah. getting all the groups together better to focus on the new and because there's so much people lying there are they they want the knowledge and in our yeah. in our groupism you know in our fight with within the group we waste the time which we can preach to those people i agree my total focus is on new people and you know and when the new people come they come with new new energy new blood new intelligence you know so many you know and then you know just just fan their enthusiasm yeah and then they when you fan it you know and it comes something brilliant comes out mm. I mean, there are there are billions of people. I mean, in the in the UK, there's around, uh, I think, around not point the the number of people in the UK practicing Krishna consciousness is a is about not point not not two percent of the population. It's very small. So there's no point arguing with each other. Let's just yeah. focus on the millions of people in the UK that have yeah, never heard absolutely. of Krishna, never heard of Krishna absolutely. consciousness. I mean, I I can't be bothered to waste my time arguing with people these days. And we've got lots of mats and lots of sanghas in the UK, and that's great. Let's just preach to your local community and share people, yeah. share with people the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. You know, let's let's just not argue with each other. That's my approach as well. And that is that is the best approach because that will give you the results. You know, mm. because everyone is Krishna's part and parcel. So those people also who are not involved in Krishna consciousness, they are also Krishna's part and parcel. Krishna is there in their heart also. So yeah. if you just you just have to reach them and you have to just you know make um, connect with them. and once you connect with them somehow you know then they will start following so that's what you know we are in the pipeline you know on and the next is you know because prabhupad's mission is paschatya desa tarine so we say you know prabhupad came to deliver the western world so india i have i'm doing it now it's set now i want to focus to western preaching mm -hmm. you know so target those people inquisitive people those people who want knowledge in the west america europe those kind of people you know mm -hmm. So we are making a website, Iskon Inc. Edu website, which our app is there. We are making a website also, specially targeted to the Western people, where the Western people, you know, will, you know, they'll get the solution of their problems. We'll try to try target them. You know how to re how to 
reach them and try to get them on board to come to our sangha and start joining our lectures or having a conversation with us you know trying to understand philosophy you know life and karmas and you know vegetarian and all those things you know slowly slowly trying to you know implant bhakti seed in their you know in their heart so this is what you know it's my, my next mm. you know i'm going to mm. uh, very soon mm. start doing that also. and it sounds like particularly in the united states you've got a lot of supporters and followers already uh, there's quite a, quite a few devotees that are already involved with this calling yeah it's con yeah the long island temple has you know a good congregation going the new york temple you know and plus we have quite a few farms now so mm. very soon we'll have more farms than the entire is gone together you know so many farms we'll have mm. so by krishna's mercy and robal mercy so jai my people are handling that everything there so jai working. jai yeah. Well, in mercy of all the Vaishnavas, you know. So that's yeah. Really well, I'm I'm really encouraged, and uh, I'm I'm going to keep I'm going to keep an eye on what you're doing on social media, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, over the next six to twelve months and year and two years to see how much ink on ink is growing. And I will be keeping an ear out and an eye out for that kind of um, legal issue as well to see what. Yeah, happens. yeah. I'm going to update you, you know, for for that. You know. Well, we're 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 friends now on social media. Yeah. We've got each other's WhatsApp numbers, so we can keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So because many things I can't tell you in this broadcast, you know, <laughs> podcast, you know that are off the record, you know. There's a there's a lot of things that people don't share on this broadcast, but they share with me privately. You know, since I started this podcast two years ago, I've I've had a, so many devotees from around the world contact me asking me for help. Asking me for advice, and I'm not a I'm not a counselor in that way in that sense. I'm not a trained therapist or anything, and I get so many devotees uh, getting in touch uh, because they I think they just want someone to talk to, you know. And I it, and unfortunately, a lot of those reasons are bad reasons. People, you know, abuse they might be receiving or difficulties they're having with management. Uh, you know, and it's quite sad, but um, I'm keen to, like you, I'm keen to encourage people in their Krishna consciousness. You know, I, I love this philosophy and I know how much it's changed my life. And I want other people to feel that same enthusiasm and, you know, devotion, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, that, that is what the Vaishnava's, you know, attitude also, you know, he's like, para dukha dukhi. He sees, you know, he wants to see everyone happy, you know, no one, no one unhappy, you know. And he goes out of his way to, you know, make people happy and make make people give Krishna consciousness to every everyone. Mm. That is what is, you know, Vaishnava's consciousness also. You know? And you are doing it perfectly, even through your broadcast also, you know. I am sure many people are going to get inspired, you know, by your broadcast and you know all these things. And that's what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter. You know, the person who is very dear to me is that person who takes this philosophy to all the world, all the other people. You know, mm. so that is what you know. Actually, I I call like Bhakti Siddhant call the books the Brihad Midanga. I call the internet now the Brihad Midanga because talking to you can reach so many people. You know, mm. so many people worldwide we can reach. You know, like I know when our our post, you know, on Instagram they have around thirty five thousand likes. Mm. Single mm. post has thirty five thousand likes. Thirty thousand likes, you know, twenty thousand likes, like that, you know, one million views, two million views. So just one click button, we post it. Sitting in Jaipur, I'm posting it, and it's going to millions of people around the world, and they are seeing it getting impacted by it. You know, something is going in their mind, in their brain, you know, in their consciousness. Mm. So they may not take up to Krishna consciousness, you know, at the same, you know, at that moment, but in the future, the seed is getting sown in their heart, mm. and eventually, Propa told once, you know. Even if someone touches my book, his Krishna consciousness has started, you know. So this mm. is like touching people, you know, through different, different ways, means. So this is the Brihad Midanga, the internet. You know, the, the internet revolution is the, you know, big, biggest thing that has happened for devotees, actually, I feel, you know. Mm. Devotees can go, go out. I mean, before the, before the pandemic, I hadn't even heard of Zoom. I'd never even heard of it. And now I use Zoom on a regular basis, <laughs> yeah. uh, particularly so to record this podcast. Yeah. 
So I think the I think the pandemic has done something good for the devotees. At least you yes. know, they have some more on online, you know, and they able to. I, I, I did so much reading during the lockdowns and so much uh, <laughs> of my own research into Krishna consciousness. It was mm. a very useful time. Um, we've been recording for some time. You and I can have a brief chat after, uh, but I'm I really appreciate you coming on as the guest on this week's podcast uh, of the Hare Krishnas in Britain. It's been great to hear your story and. To hear the the story, the ongoing story of Iskon Inc. as well, uh, and w- what you've told me, I just didn't know. I'd never thought about the registration of different names in different countries and what they mean legally. I I never thought of that, and now I have thought about it because you've told me about it. Um, yeah. yeah so, and, and maybe you know, the revival of Iskon as Prabhupada wanted. You know, I'm very much hopeful that we'll do it through his conning. Mm. What Prabhupada wanted, the, you know, because the kind of things that have happened in our moment in the last 50 years, you know, I mean, you know if we, we keep it inside our moment, that's why, you know, people don't know. Otherwise, you know, uh, people will be, the outside people will be shocked, you know, the kind of fall downs and the kind of child abuse and the kind of book changes and everything that is going on. Really, really depressing very much yeah it's hugely depressing actually yeah. um okay prabhu um i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna i'm gonna say goodbye to everybody watching at home and you, you and i can have that very quick chat after so a big thank you to Garang, garanga sunder prabhu for uh coming on as the guest on this week's edition of the harry christians of britain podcast he was guest number 64 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yeah, Narad. You know, I just told you before the podcast started. You know, it's it's on the podcast, right? So I yeah. will say that you know that yeah. Narad Muni was the broadcast IB Minister of Vishnu, broadcasting Minister of Vishnu, and you, I hope, you know, Narad Das becomes the podcasting <laughs> Minister of our Krishna Conscious Movement. You know, so that you know you can podcast it. Well, ironically, in the material world, I do work in PR and in public relations oh, okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and journalism. Uh, so um, if you're watching this um, at home, sorry, if you are watching this, let me start again. Everybody, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, please do put a positive comment. Please do like, love or care for it. And please do share the link with your friends and your family and the pages and Facebook groups that you're involved with. Uh, we always love to receive feedback on our podcasts. We get a lot of positive, positive feedback. And, and mostly on every podcast, I do receive messages after uh, telling me what people think, what they think about me <laughs> 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 or what they think about the guest. So um, this has been episode num- number 64. Until next week, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone.